Good afternoon, YouTube. Today uh, I'm playing out in the dirt with something I think is pretty neat. So I went and brought the uh, the old back half of an IRS pan out, and I set the uh, transmission up on it. I also set up the cable shifters. Get to play with those. So um, let's flip this camera around and uh, show you what I did. Okay, so here we got the. 2014 cable shift out of the uh, I think it was some kind of outback or something like that uh, basically just the mom car the manual mom car with the six speed like I said in the last video came out of an awesome shop in Billings Montana it was a uh, Dietz Auto awesome guys um, I've just been so amazed at the mechanism in here so it's got that central ball there and so this, ah shoot, it's kind of hard to show what I'm doing one-handed. This is going to do the back and forth movement right there. And let me pause and relocate, and I'll show you the side to side. Okay, so like I said, here's that back and forth. That's pretty easy to, to wrap your head around, right? It's just got this little plastic, uh, I don't know, spacer, grommet, whatever you want to call that thing. That drives the forward back. And when you start going side to side, you get this really cool motion here. So that's coming from, there's this shaft right here. It comes off the side of that ball there and see how it comes vertical there. And it's got another ball and another socket there. Look at that. Makes a forward back motion. So that's pretty neat. Then it's got this... Uh, ramp thingy here pretty simple uh, reverse lockout and then that ramp makes it want to pop back so I think this thing's pretty freaking cool personally it's got a spring-loaded detent see that plastic track there it's got a slot there it wants to hang out in neutral you can wiggle this thing about it wants to stay in there so you have to give it some force to get it to go so that's pretty cool so Let's see, let me go show you the, uh, the cable shift mechanism. Alright, here's the cable shift side, so this would be in your car, upside down. That white plastic ball on the end there fits into that one. And then the side to side motion activates this one. So it's the thinner cable, activates side to side, so that guy comes up to here. This, uh, this, um... Shifter assembly, cable assembly came with the brackets, and that's got to be where it goes, right in there. And uh, that one just kind of pops in. It's it's like a ball and socket mechanism. This guy has a cotter pin for the. Um, this will be the left right mo or the forward back motion, but don't have the pin in right now. And it uses. Oh, it popped out. It uses a. Um, this thing's like. Almost the exact same thing. Your ah, uh, oh, don't have it over here. The um, the what do you call it? The brake line retainer things. But basically, it's the same idea, right? It's kind of a spring-loaded piece of steel, slides into there. The transmission came with the or the cable shifter came with a spare bracket. Same transmission year, same cable shift year. So these guys are one to one. So that's pretty neat. See it over there? Pretty cool, huh? I'm pretty stoked. Um, oh, and then so when I eyeball the lengths here, I can I can stretch this guy pretty good, right? So this this is going to be close to fitting in the car as is without having to get a whole new set of cables. So that'll be nice. Um, this guy's got the same little retainer clips, so I wouldn't be too surprised if I attempt to make a different box for this guy because this thing's huge. And it, <laughs> it's, I mean, the back of this tunnel is wide, but the tunnel gets narrow up at the front there, so I have a feeling that's going to be too big, but we'll see. Uh, one thing I noticed about the cable shift mechanism, uh, you can see there's these through bolts and it looks like there's a seam going all the way around it. It almost looks like, here, let me flip it around. Whoop! This is hard to do one-handed. So, 
to me it kind of looks, see that gap there and that gap there? It looks like this little shifter unit is its own assembly that gets dropped in to this giant plastic thing. So if that's the case, it might be possible to pull this guy out and give it a custom box. But I don't know if I want to go too far down that rabbit hole just yet. We might look into that if there's time later on, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, wait for the donkey to stop. He hawing. Okay, so the reason I brought this guy out here is I wanted to kind of do my best to place this where it's maybe going to end up. So it's crooked, right? That's not the end of the world. But I put the bell housing face right about flush with the, um, the end of the um, frame horns there. So if I remember right, I think the factory transmission would be somewhere about there, a couple inches forward. So, well, let's just, I'm just playing with it right now, you know, it's got to make my own mounts anyway, so we'll deal with that later. I see, Riley found the frisbee. Do you want to throw it for her? Good job. Okay, I'll take it. Are you ready? Get it. Okay, so looking down, oh, before we go there. So I thought a lot about the problem of the oil galleys and oiling in general, right? So those shifter components up inside there, they were designed to have oil. They were designed to have oil on them. So I'm thinking the... I guess easiest and maybe smartest choice. Focus. Good job throwing it, Anna. The easiest and smartest choice is probably going to be to make a cap, a thin little cap, which will need to accommodate that guy, right? That guy sticks out. Make a cap similar to the normal uh, output shaft cover thingy. With the shortened axle, it's only going to be a tiny bit longer than the than the lock nut thing. If I cap it, I don't have to weld the plug in, so that's that's a, <laughs> a lot of time saved there. I don't have to deal with welding up any of the oiling stuff. And I have a feeling this guy spinning around might be able to fling enough oil up in here to mimic what the original... Um, intent was, if that makes sense. So, <laughs> you threw the frisbee to horse poop, you silly goose. <laughs> you silly girl. Ah! Come here, bring that here. Bring that here. Yes. Hang on, Anna. Okay, so I'll throw in a couple pictures um, provided by Subaru Gears when I was emailing them. Uh, but basically what people do is they, they cut a chunk out of here, going that way, and then a similar shaped chunk on the back. And then the, the plug is sticking out in free space. Alright little one, hang on. So Anna's holding the, the plug that would normally be welded in right so that guy would be just kind of floating out in space here so relative to the final position of this thing right it would be basically floating somewhere in there which is not necessarily a bad thing right that's that's basically fine right so you can't cut too much over here you know you could miss a little bit of that oh and i spent a lot of time thinking about why did they give this thing such a weird looking shape why has it got that funky excess material there why is it like so i think thank you little one i think it is weighted because you don't want pressure pushing against the um the uh what do you call them the synchros inside the transmission you want this guy to just rest easy so i have a feeling that's why this thing is such a funky shape so i'm kind of hesitant to hack that off so we'll see where it ends up in space out here and uh, see if it can clear. Okay, so now that we talked about 
my tentative plan just to put a cover plate on this guy, preserve the oiling system, and I don't have to TIG weld anything. Now, regarding cutting this thing up. So, if I try to put it right there at that position, it's going to be pretty tight. I mean, I knew from the get-go that I was probably going to have to cut out the torsion tube. So, we'll go look at the, um, the back of the blue car. And that will kind of give us a, a better understanding of where we're going to end up. So, let's go look at the blue car. So, of course, the goal is going to be to be center of gravity as low as possible and that direction as far as possible, right? So the main obstacles are the torsion tube housing, the edges of the frame horns, and this little guy. I'll, I'll go move that transmission off the pan and show you, but um, this guy's I don't think is structural at all. That guy can go away. Basically, I'm probably going to have to run uh, a tube brace under this guy to compensate for the tube that I cut out of the center there. Um, any of you uh, wise folk that have done this before, please uh, let me know if I'm on the right track, right? Because I don't want to remove structural stuff from the center here and not replace it. So, um, note where, so this guy, this face is basically where the body intersects. It, it kind of slopes down. Right? So, the... On my hand. I see, there is something on your hand, little one. So, the goal is going to be not to cut into the body, if we can help it. Um, I'm going to try as hard as I can. I just don't know if it's even possible to bring that whole transmission height low enough to clear the frame horns. I'm pretty sure I've seen folks that just hack the frame horns off and, uh, and uh, put new structural members in. Um, I really don't want to get that far out, but I sure hope it, I don't know. We'll, we'll just gotta have to see, see where we end up. I think I've seen, so this is a swing axle car, or sorry, it used to be a swing axle car, but it was always IRS. So I can't remember if one of the models had a different dip on the frame horn. Um, I'm not sure. Anyway, so let's go take that transmission off the other pan and then, uh, take a look at what needs to be cut. Actually, you know what, while we're here, let's look inside the car. Okay, so now we're inside the vehicle here. The car actually used to be an orange color, so that's that's the orange right there, right? So that's the body of the car, and then the black is the pan. So there's some space to work in here. I don't think the transmission will end up too far into here. However, it's gonna be tricky to Weld weld any reinforcement from this side. All right, so we're back at it. It's night time. Had to take a break for dinner and hang out with the family. So everyone's in bed, and I can talk about Volkswagens. Plan ahead. Okay, so I was gonna go ahead and just remove all the cabling off camera, and I found out that this is a, a tricky mechanism that locks it in here. So you cannot. Pull this thing straight off. It does not go. Hey, dog. Um, there's this little spring-loaded mechanism here. See how it, you can feel it kind of press down, but you can pry as hard as you want on that. It will not go. So you press down, and that like disengages it. And then if you peel up while pressing down, it'll pop it free. So let's see here. There we go. It's it's physically pushing in on this thing. So, uh, I figured that was important enough to let everyone know how that guy works. So you don't break the thing like I almost did. <laughs> okay, so we're going to pull this away and uh, I'm going to mark a couple spots and then we'll go from there. Alright, so this may be a little tricky to try and show on camera, but mark there. Marked. Where'd it go? Right there, right there, back over there. So basically, you can trim that little bit. This little flange, that could go away, right? And then uh, we need to leave some space for, let's see, that thing is extended, so we need a little, little extra space, so I didn't quite put enough there. Um, however, once you get through this thing, you're in the dead space, and we'll look at that in just a moment here and kind of plan through right there. This little 
um, sheet metal flange, I'm pretty sure that can go away, right? That little cotter pin is like the furthest out object. Um, the shifter flangey thing here, most of that could get cut off, right? We only need that thing to sit right in there. We don't care about that thing over there. And then this guy, we'll see, but that'll probably clear. Okay, so now when we look down this tube here, let's see if we can try and pull a straight vertical down while still keeping the light on. So that's going to be tricky to do. I'll just kind of have to use my hand here. So we're looking at going straight that way, straight basically towards right there. So this is the center uh, splined piece of the of the um, the torsion tube. So you can see that orange color, that torsion tube that's stuck, right? That's the other end of the torsion tube. So that center is the other end of the splines are probably about there. Um, so that can all come out. This bottom plate can come out. So we'll probably end up using, I don't know, maybe quarter inch plate. We'll probably do a couple of walls here. And then on that side, you know, a similar wall. And that should be something when, when this guy is cut out on the bottom, we should be able to reach up and in, buzz a bead along there, buzz a bead along the top. Now, one thing that's interesting that we'll have to work around. We're gonna have to work around the cabling and uh, fuel lines and whatever all, you know, parking brake lines and all that stuff. That's that's not gonna be the end of the world. Uh, those are flex cables anyway, if I remember right. But all in all, I think this isn't gonna be too bad. Um, I think the trickiest part is gonna be trying to replace um, this center stuff. I suppose we could weld it from the underside, right? We don't need that ramp down. That ramp down is to, to meet up with that, um, the center of that torsion tube. So we don't need that, right? If we can replace, we cut that thing out, cut the bottom out, cut the top out, put a thicker wall there. We'll have to do something thicker coming across the top to tie it all together. And then, uh, we'll see what we do on the bottom. Maybe it'll be a HSS tube, maybe a 3 8 plate, something like that. Something good and sturdy. So, now that I, you know, see the transmission on this thing and see it all up close, I don't think it's going to be as bad as I initially thought or as difficult. Um, let me move that transmission off and we've, we've got our marks so we'll be able to kind of imagine where it is. So that'll, that'll help us see better in a second here. I'm allowed to dream, right? Maybe someday, huh? That's something else, you know, that I considered. If I don't do the plug and I do a plate on the end, they make, Subaru Gears makes the all-wheel drive uh, pinion reversed. It is possible to do this thing all-wheel drive. So if I don't TIG weld the thing and I can reuse the same trans, so. Something to dream about, but I don't want to tackle that right now. It's it's too much to deal with. One thing I just realized I intended to look at, I don't remember the exact position um, in and out where this guy floats in space, right? Because if it floats down here, we can bring that trans much lower, but if it's up here, well, then we're out of luck. So, um, or <laughs> you got to, make some serious modifications to these uh, frame horns. So we'll see when we get closer. I think the most important step now is putting together the transmission and getting it to fit. Okay, so uh, this kind of channel shape, I'm almost positive that's where that body sits down, right? So I, I would kind of consider that like the ceiling I really don't want to cut the body if I don't have to, but we might get to that point. We just got to do it. So hope for the best, but I guess we'll I just have to plan for it, plan for the worst. Okay, so um, let's bring the light over. So to me, that doesn't, 
It's hard to say, but that doesn't look like that guy is welded where that thing intersects those two joints. Hard to say. Let's see, can you bend it out? No, that thing might be welded. Maybe it is. Let's see if we can look in a little closer there. Hard to say, that might be a weld. So that's probably a structural member. Um, so we're looking at something like this in terms of the cuts to be made. Um, this is really quite the unique pressed shape. Really cool, huh? Those Germans I know their stuff. So based on that mark, that mark, that mark, it's gonna be tight. So these seams are probably gonna get trimmed to fit. Um, yeah, so you can always add plate over whatever we trim out. This guy obviously going away. So we're looking at that sort of a cut. And we should be all right making those cuts from the underside of the vehicle with the pan on. Obviously it would be great to not have the body on, but that's not an option. I don't have a lift to pull the body off. So, I just gotta live with it. Um, I think that'll be it for showing the fit check stuff. That's kind of my plan. So I'm, I'm recording this process because if someone else wants to do this, I want them to have a full understanding of the difficulties that you're going to encounter and uh, you know I'm hoping also to uh, reach out for advice from other people that have done similar modifications before and uh, see if we can get some advice. So I think that's going to be it for tonight. See you later.